We have the same spark of life inside of us, each one of us. That fire burns in, in all of us, and that's incredibly powerful. Our people weren't always like this. A lot of them are getting stuck in alcoholism and drug addiction, and it's because of the things that they've, they've had to endure. True healing is when our men can become men again. And when we can walk up and look people that we've hurt right in the eye and say, please forgive me. It's so much trauma and things can happen to our communities, but we are such a resilient and vibrant people that we still have all those gifts. Landbeast Healing is an experience created for people in a rural or remote setting where there's a connection to the land that has been developed and cultivated spiritually through ceremonies, through prayers, and through intentionally bringing the land into partnership with the people in the healing process. Healing. It's a complex word that faces people everywhere. For the Kwanlun Dun First Nation based in Whitehorse, Yukon, complex is met one step at a time. First, they built a land based treatment center in their traditional territory. It has garnered national attention for the way it battles addictions. Now the Kwanlun Dun wants to share the healing process with others, and they also want to know how other First Nations tackle healing. Having um, the gathering that we had over the uh, three days was um, very significant in that we are, as Indigenous people, are just reclaiming you know, our rightful place, our true um, identity, and, and, and really looking for our own answers. Treatment and healing are needed for many First Nations people in Canada. They're the building blocks for Aboriginal communities to overcome the effects of colonization. So we understand a lot more about the level of trauma, the level of intergenerational effects than we ever have before. And now that we have a commitment also for the UN uh, Declaration on Indigenous Peoples, we've got a different policy framework and international commitment to making this work. However, the main message the Kwanlun Dun First Nation shares is that solutions start from inside the community. Nobody else is going to solve our problems but us. We can, you know, build relationships with other governments and, and uh, get their help in certain areas. But if you're going to make changes, that change has to come from within. With that in mind, the Kwanlun Dun hosted a three-day conference to share what other First Nations have learned about healing on the land and culture. We put our intentions forward, like what is it that we want to achieve here? And we really wanted to bring together um, people from Yukon and across the country to, to talk about um, land and culture and how it, um, it's, uh, plays into the work that we do every day and what we're, we're trying to, to achieve. <laughs> and so it's not all about defining the problem. A lot of it is about defining uh, both uh, the, the, the strengths of the community that, that then are the building blocks for the, uh, the healing. So we need to study both the successes and the strengths as well as uh, further and deeper understanding of uh, problems. There's, there's many things I think that we could share with other First Nations, uh, best practices. And, um, you know, and that's what this conference is all about, is to share those best practices with other communities because we have people coming to us all the time asking us, 
help us. You know, how can we do this? You know, we've done uh, many fires here at the cultural center and uh, um, uh, they are very sacred things. You know, like I said, I, uh, the ancestors are there in, now with us in this fire, right, in this gathering. Phil Gattensby is a member of the Carcross Tagish First Nation. He is best known as a cultural counselor. He's also part of the Jackson Lake Wellness Team where he offers spiritual guidance. When we do a sacred fire, in this fire here, we don't put any kind of garbage. We don't, you know, throw cigarette butts or wrappers or anything in there. We keep it as clean as we possibly can. And it will be like an ongoing prayer. What I wanted to talk about a little bit was just that um, this can belong to any family, any people. You have, you know, struggles in your family. You can light a fire just like we did out here. We can, you can make it into a prayer fire like that, right, and burn it. And, and use it like that as a prayer. Uh, it, it is something that we all have that ability to do. The concept of finding strength from the land is not new. John Burroughs was an American naturalist and nature writer in the 1800s. He once said, I go to nature to be soothed and healed and to have my senses put in order. So the topic of my speech today is simply real courage and it ties in with um, healing on the land as well. With a social degree Andy Nyman has worked with the Kwanlin Dunn First Nation. He's run his own counseling service helping others with addictions. He became the Yukon's first child and youth advocate and says anyone can change. That only comes when you face the truth about your own painful experiences. You know as First Nations people we cannot talk about healing in our communities without acknowledging our past. Our past is our past. No one else has our past. And our past involves the residential school. Andy says the residential school had four walls that confined Aboriginal children. He says they had very limited access to the healing qualities of the land. The disconnect led to a lot of the dysfunction we see today among First Nations. You know, there is no peace that is as powerful as the peace that is found out in the wilderness. And that peace can only be found in the wilderness. It is so powerful and so beautiful that I cannot describe or capture its amazing qualities. Because it has to be seen and it has to be felt to be truly appreciated and understood. You know, one of the worst, if not the worst, stumbling blocks that we deal with from the residential school is fear. We were controlled in the schools by fear, by violence, and by intimidation, which spilled over into our communities and into our families. That's our past, that's our history. And what our people need, and anyone who is going to overcome their past, what they really need is a little bit of real courage. Being way out there, in the middle of nowhere, hunting and fishing with the group, you are forced to watch out for each other. And that alone automatically incites courage. As I wind down here today, courage is humility. Courage knows how to cry in any situation. Courage 
will never, never give up. True healing is when our men can become men again and when we can walk up and look people that we've hurt right in the eye and say, please forgive me. I hurt you. David Rattree is a member of the Teltan Nation. With a background in education, he's been a practicing Aboriginal counselor for over a decade. He says Aboriginal men need to find their way back from pain and shame so that they can help in the healing of their own communities. We have to get down to that level where the native man can become a warrior again, where he can go through, forgive himself. We have to look at forgiveness. What does real forgiveness look like? I forgive myself for whoever I've hurt. And then I walk up to whoever I've hurt and says, please forgive me. Some of them aren't going to forgive us. David says when traumatic memories are free from painful emotions, you are healed from that memory. He says this is the destination for many Aboriginal people, a place where all painful memories have no trauma attached. You've got to be able to see yourself as healed in here, in here. You've got to see yourself as healed. And you see yourself at peace with the world, at peace with yourself. If you can see that vision of where you're going to go, you can get there. But if you can't see that or you lose it, you're going to lose your way again. The ability to just keep that vision is critical. David says past traumas will trip you up if you do not deal with them. But he also says healing should be gentle. He says people who connect with their pain in a gentle way find real change. And the messages that come from them are very similar how to go back to the source, how to be calm, how to be centered, how to let go of your grief, harmony. All of these things are possible. So healing is not way out there. We, we, we know it's in here. What our elders have is the truth. And there's nothing that can defeat them. Larry House is from the Cree Nation of Chesapeake in northern Quebec. He's also the coordinator of their mental wellness team. He says the Cree have seen healing success from clients learning and applying cultural teachings. Those values that are inherent in our way of life, in our worldview, those values that are there, that's what's going to carry our people forward. It's very important because the more aware you become of who you are, you realize that the values are inherent there. And out on the land, you're more cautious about the choices that you make for yourself. And if you can apply that principle anywhere, everywhere you go, you apply those values and those principles. And whatever you do, then, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing that can stop you. Larry says the Chesapeake Cree are working to change their whole community. He says doing it for themselves has real benefits. Because the more you develop uh, the actual community members, like the broader the base of change, the easier it is to change. You know, like the more you, you develop the capacity on the ground, uh, the less work that the, uh, the agencies have to do because we're helping them achieve those goals of wellness. I want to live in a healthy, safe community too. I want to be able to go out and walk down the street without having to worry about being accosted. Chief Doris Bill has stood on the side of the road during drinking and driving check stops with the RCMP. She's also met one-on-one -on -one with elders in their homes to ask about their issues over safety. And she has helped start an anonymous tip line with the telephone company Northwest Tell. Activities which are designed to tackle broad-based community healing. If you want to change, if you want a safer community, then that change has to come from within. There has to be a fundamental shift and if that's what you want, then walk with me, help me, help me to do this. 
because I cannot do it alone. Our leaders are um, incredibly dedicated to, to recognizing and realizing the wellness in, in their community and I think that what I've seen over the years is that they um, just do not want to leave anyone behind. There's finally an understanding that yes, clinical and mainstream approaches have much to offer and that the First Nations ways of rebuilding individuals, families and communities, it works and it works really well. And we're able to define that well enough now to actually get some sustained funding, which is new. We now understand what our issues are. We understand where we need to put our resources and um, we're no longer chasing the problem. We, un we actually understand it and we know what we need to do to address it. Um, and um, we're not looking for anyone to come in and fix anything for us. We, we want partnerships and, and we need to be, um, you know, directing the work that happens in our community. The Yukon is a land full of beauty and power. Tapping into that is the medicine needed to bring back healthy living. First Nations use culture to connect with their lands. Mother Earth is simply waiting to hear from all of us once more. <laughs>